Hi, this is Swapnil Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk here at KubeCon and CloudEdicon in Valencia, Spain. And today we have with us, once again, Kenny Johnston. You are a Senior Director of Product Management at GitLab. It's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Today we are going to talk about, you know, version 15. Uh, before we go there, uh, quickly tell us, you know, you're here at KubeCon. What kind of energy you have seen so far? Yeah, it's been great. Lots of excitement. Um, I, I'm definitely seeing a trend towards kind of operationalizing cloud native infrastructure. So that can be things like enabling developers to easily deploy to it or ensuring that the software that you're deploying to uh, cloud native environments to clusters is secure. We're hearing a lot about secure software supply chain and uh, software build materials here at Coupon. And um, it's just great, you know, it's a great open great, um, showcase of open source community and the kind of power of open source. KubeCon um, has become a kind of definitive conference for open source tech and for developer enablement of open source tech. So it's been really exciting to get to be here. Of course, it's running in production, but also the kind of use cases that are there, you know, of course, big scale companies are there and there, a lot of adoption is smaller, you know. Uh, what does it mean, you know, for, you know, your space? Because the expertise that people have in Kubernetes is also different. We are seeing adoption of low code, no code. There are still, you know, a lot of uh, greenfield uses. There are still folks who are new to Kubernetes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that is one of the things that I mean by operationalizing. We're enabling developers to more easily deploy to Kubernetes. Uh, the pattern that we see at GitLab is uh, larger organizations have created platform teams that enable their developers to use tools that are kind of blessed by the central organization to um, ship code easily, to understand how their code gets shipped uh, to Kubernetes environments and get all the benefits of Kubernetes without having to kind of manage some of the overhead. So I've definitely seen a kind of level of um, platformization around Kubernetes develop. And you know, one of the great things about GitLab as a DevOps platform, as one DevOps platform, is we enable that collaboration between platform and ops teams who are managing and um, enabling deployment and development and direct app dev teams who are uh, trying to get their applications to production. Once again, there are certain, you can look at trends or the challenges that could be niche specific to a specific industry, but there are something patterns. So what kind of patterns are you seeing there? We're definitely seeing the pattern of um, Kubernetes getting pushed farther out to the edge. So you see that in telco space, there are lots of applications that are getting deployed to Kubernetes clusters closer to the edge. Um, and we also see the pattern of um, applications themselves, you know, the whole cloud native movement is that you're getting more and more applications and the management of those applications. So things like service mesh and just being able to easily understand all the different types of services. My application, if I'm an application developer, I might own one service, but I interact with and deploy to, uh, d interact with and deploy to environments that have hundreds of uh, applications. And there's a lot of complexity involved in operating a platform of that size that still allows a developer to focus on kind of their singular specific service. Uh, now let's talk about the version 15. Yeah. Uh, which uh, the reason I ask this question, you know, some of that, you know, either features, functionality changes will also reflect on what is going in the space as well. Yeah, it's exactly right. Um, yeah. So at GitLab 15, we're really excited to be um, improving observability, our security and compliance end-to-end -end enterprise agile management, and uh, data and ML ops. So in observability, um, last year GitLab acquired a company called OpsTrace that is an observability distribution that enables developers to out of the box have access to an observability platform so they can not only collect the metrics that they need uh, about their application in production, but also they can get integrations of that data directly into the, the context that matters. So think about a developer who's writing code, they wanna know about recent errors that have happened in that uh, directly related to that code while they're writing it, or a developer who wants to know about recent incidents that happened as a result of code that they're touching so that they can make sure they're running extra performance tests or regression tests while writing code. That kind of experience is something that only one DevOps platform and GitLab as one DevOps platform can provide. In observability, we're also um, improving the way that you can see the value stream of your um, application development. So uh, our users use GitLab to do everything from planning what work they're going to do to delivering that work to production. And that kind of complete one viewpoint of uh, your entire DevOps process allows GitLab to be the central place for spotting uh, bottlenecks in that process or places where you can improve as a DevOps team, uh, whether that's, hey, we really need to break issues down um, in a more robust way, or we need to improve our time to merge, or we need to make sure that our um, deployment process is testing correctly because we're having a lot of 
uh, failures of deployment or we are seeing a lot of incidents and we're not able to respond to them as rapidly as possible, we're going to be able to connect all of that together as the one DevOps platform to give you real true value stream viewpoint. On security and compliance, I mentioned this has been a huge topic at KubeCon this week, um, but the idea of not only knowing the SBOM, the software bill of materials for what is what components are in your app application, what dependencies you're using, what dependencies those dependencies are using, ensuring that they're secure, but also attesting to the fact that what you uh, whether your developer wrote, that the developer is the right person, that the code that is tested is the same code that's packaged and stored in your repository or your package registry, and that same uh, package registry artifact is the same one that gets deployed to production. There's a movement called SLSA, uh, Secure, Software, Secure Software Supply Chain um, uh, Initiative that we call SALSA that kind of immediately gives you uh, a categorization of how secure, secure your software supply chain is. And GitLab is going to continue to invest in enabling you to out of the box attain much higher levels, like level three or level four in, in Salsa designation, just by using GitLab as your one DevOps platform. We're also working to improve agile planning management. So think about if you're an IT, or an IT director or a VP of product who wants to see how this initiative that's being created in software is tracking, you can follow from the top level objective all the way down to specific merge requests that are happening across tens of development teams to know the kind of current status. And then lastly, you know, GitLab is, is seeing in the market that more and more applications are not just app code, they're also data and ML models that are associated with that data. So think about the example of a Netflix style recommendation engine. Developers are increasingly being asked to um, interact with those models and lifecycle manage the model just like they do code to know that the improvement to the model that they might have just um, tested and learned that that improvement is actually an improvement that the packaging of that model is actually easily deployable to production alongside the code. So we're seeing and we're building a lot of capabilities to enable developers to not just manage code but also manage models and data right within GitLab. So when you look at you know software supply chain, you look at S bombs. There are a lot of open source projects. Like SPDX is there from Linux Foundation, and there are numerous other projects. But the main the important thing is that um, awareness about understanding supply chain is not one monolith that all the code is coming from one source. Uh, there are dependence on not only libraries, even the packages are coming from different sources. Even though different sources can, the same package can be created by di different folks as well. Uh, sometimes people don't even understand what is there in their images, you know, container images, what the dependence yeah, are, where the hard links are. So the first question is that, uh, how much awareness are you seeing? Because we cannot solve a problem if people don't even understand uh, the software supply chain. I will say most of what we hear is coming from we're being told we need to produce a software bill of materials. Uh, GitLab does that out of the box. In our ultimate tier, we have the capability to produce an SBOM that is multi-layered dependency analysis that not, doesn't just show you what those are, but also known vulnerabilities in those dependencies. Um, but yeah, I think oftentimes there's a, I'm being mandated to produce this document. GitLab, can you do it? And it's really nice because we, our answer is yes, we do it definitively. Um, it's available, it's been a part of our product for some time now. It's the next steps though that I think any organization who's being, is saying I need an SBOM is tomorrow going to be asking for, I need attestation of the kind of, uh, I call it the chain of custody of software through my development process. And that's what uh, Salsa levels are meant to provide. One of the components of the Salsa levels is an SBOM. It's in the, um, it's in the build phase, but there's also the other components of ensuring that a developer signed their commits, that you can confirm that, that it's that developer, that the package was signed and not tampered with between when it was stored in a package registry and deployed to production. So all of those other things are kind of the things that someone who's asking for an SBOM today is going to be asking for tomorrow. And one more problem with the S bombs or you know the whole software supply chain is where does the bug stop? You know, it does stop at the end user who has to worry about it, the vendor, the SaaS provider, or the maintainer. So because the ch it's not just the supply chain of that code, yeah. it also so many parties are involved in that. From my understanding, the research and many of the organizations that um, provide guidance here, it's important to be aware of certain types of vulnerabilities, and then critical vulnerabilities is places where you should be looking for alternatives in your dependency tree. So if you are using an open source piece of software and it has uh, critical vulnerabilities, you should be looking to either use a different piece of software or 
you know, perhaps you could work upstream to improve that software, not very likely in most organizations. Um, but yeah, I think it's that even just awareness of non-critical vulnerabilities that um, many of these compliance regimes want to make sure that you have kind of, at least you and your organization are aware that there are vulnerabilities in these dependencies that you're shipping. Kenny, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Of course, we talked about GitLab version 15, but also you talked about the most important discussion that is going on these days is software supply chain. Uh, there is still a lot of confusion, misunderstanding, and a lot of awareness is needed. And the most important thing was also that people still don't understand whose responsibility it is to, to not only producing as bombs, but also, and there was a lot of effort initiative from the federal government also last year, executive order was also there. So let's hope that by next uh, KubeCon, it will become a kind of solved problem. But Security is kind of a process, it's not a product. Yeah, so. uh, it's an evolution. I think GitLab can certainly help organizations on their way along that journey, and there are, there are parts of our tool that make that easy out of the box, but you're right, it's important to not just to take for granted what you get from a vendor, but to deeply understand your kind of security risks as an organization. So I appreciate you having us on the call today, or on the podcast today. <laughs>